Welcome, everybody. It's Wednesday night, and we're here to talk about all things World Powerhouse Wrestling. Your hosts, executive producer Jason Halbert, World Powerhouse Wrestling head referee Sherman Tank. This is Shane Jones, and we're bringing to you Beyond the Curtain. Welcome, everyone, to episode number 13, an unlucky episode, and a very, you know, not a great start to the night. <laughs> <laughs> is, well, is it that unlucky? We don't have Tank tonight. I mean, there's a silver lining in everything. I guess so. So, yeah, I'll take yeah. that. I mean, we got some technical issues uh, to start off with, but uh, yeah, well, bright who, side. Who needs sound, you know? I mean, really. I mean, do we really need to hear our guests talk? No, no. We can just make I, stuff up. they need up. to hear us talk? I mean, of course, everyone needs to hear me talk. We are not slackers. So, yeah, um, I'm telling you right now, if you're a fan of Tank, which I think there's only one, and it's his mother, um, he is not going to be on tonight. So if you, and that's even debatable, really. Yeah. Um, so if you're here to see Tank, he will not be on. So please stick around because uh, it'll be much better without oh, Tank. Oh, no. Hey, he can't even show up, and he's going to comment? Well, apparently he's uglier than normal, which I didn't think that was possible. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I am your host, uh, the voice of WPW, the one, the only, the greatest manager in WPW history, Jason Halbert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I forgot I put the, forgot to update the sound effect on that one. It's like it's been at the studio last week. Did, did you feed him in the pit this time? Huh? They, they seem they seem grateful. Did you feed them in the pit? I did, but I forgot to uh, update the sound there, so that's not the one I wanted. So anyway, uh, well, I guess we'll skip this one. Everyone's new favorite. Mama liked to party when you were in her belly. That's why you are dumb. Sherman Tank not here. Thank God. Huh? We miss Tank. Kind we of. We do. Kind yeah, of. Yeah. Sure. Sort of like, um, but. Yeah, I got nothing. I can't think no. of any way I would really miss Tank because I really, really don't. Yeah. Anyway, and uh, joined tonight by my one and only co-host, which, I mean, by default, this show's going to be 100% better than most of the other ones. Yeah, I'm sitting here, president of uh, Daily Operations, WPW, Shane Jones here. Uh, you know what? They don't like you, though. Kyle's not here. They have to... Who? Yeah, Who's not here? Kyle. Or they usually boo him. No, he they got fired, didn't he? They boo tank. They boo tank. Not, not, yeah. I don't know who this Kyle is. He's never been on the show. Anyway, uh, well, intern Kyle was there. So, anyway, so how the hell you been, Shane? I know we had to take a week off. Uh, oh, yeah. Some, some medical issues. I'll be 100% uh, honest. I was under the weather last week. It was nothing. Uh, no, it was nothing serious. It wasn't, it wasn't the Corona. Didn't no, I, I, actually, uh, what it was, um, I couldn't sleep the night before. Uh, so Tuesday night and the Wednesday morning, I got about three hours, of three hours of sleep. And when I finally woke up, uh, well, I used that term woke up and I finally had to get out of bed for work. I just had a massive migraine that just would not go away. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was feeling miserable last week. So sorry about that. And yeah, I think you know, uh, it wasn't a bad night. It wasn't a bad night to miss tank. Wasn't feeling very well. Uh, I was quite busy myself, so it wasn't a bad, uh, a uh, night for sabbatical. So, so, you know, you know, we, we, we do this on when we can. And you know what, honestly, if we have to miss a night every now and then we have to miss a night. So if you're, if you're upset with that, I don't care. Yeah. So we're here. That's what's important. Yeah. And we're a hundred percent. We're me and me and Shane are a hundred percent. I could care less about tank, but me and Shane are a hundred percent here tonight. So yeah, uh, apparently Kyle's got something big and swollen and near in his, his face in his mouth and his face yeah. something like that he likes when big swollen things are in his mouth <laughs> so he just said it made him uglier than normal which i don't for one have we actually looked at tank i try not to but have we actually looked at tank somebody has to have he, you know i he mean how he can get uglier than what he is now is just it baffles me I don't really want to see that, but I'm just saying it baffles me. <laughs> Everyone, yes, you're right. We are missing our village idiot. He's like 80%. Well, uh, maybe, well, more like 100% ugly, though. 110% <coughs> moron? Yeah, 110% moron. You know you got a little button, a mute button there you could hit to sneeze? I do. 
yeah, that would have worked instead yeah, of, you know, because uh, we heard, Hachoo! yeah, that's what we heard. Unfortunately, so. I didn't have time to plan that one out. So, <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, how you been? You doing good? Kids are doing I'm good? I'm doing fine. I don't know, you know, allergies and stuff. Kids are doing good. Been busy in the offices. Been busy, busy, busy trying to set stuff up for WPW. Good. About time someone does. Yeah. Well, I mean, so. since the greatest CEOs, you know, no longer there. I mean, someone's got to do something. They had to untangle his mess. Uh, untangle whatever. Yeah. You know, at least someone can finally appreciate the kind of work and everything I actually put put on, put you know, did behind the yeah. scenes here. No well, one fully understands it. So the good, the good news is, is that things are possibly opening back up. Things are uh, possibly getting booked. I can't confirm any any solid dates yet. But we do have one date we can confirm. Possibly, we do have one. Yeah. But hope, hopefully next week, I can tell fans about uh, some pretty big news about WPW coming back. Yay! Yeah, absolutely. My adoring fans cannot wait to see me. Greatest CEO, Scotty Mack. He was here for what, like 30 about seconds? A year. About a year. About 30 seconds? So. Yeah, but you know, he had the was, bottle issue. Oh, yeah, I was CEO for three and a half years. You're welcome. So... Let's see here. We know you're not doing anything. Well, first off, and that's not how you spell your, like you are, like you are a dumbass. Uh, anyway, um, second off, Tank, shut up. I think the woohoo is for WPW coming back. At least I hope so. No, the woohoo is for me. She's one uh, of my biggest fans. I got you. She's not locked down here in the dungeon. Ah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, she's not part of the studio audience. So, anyway, um, yeah, well, uh, help me out here. Uh, April 10th? April 10th. There TV we go. Taping. Yes. We're going back down to Mount Vernon, Illinois. $5 to come see us uh, tape some events for our Patreon page. And uh, it was an absolutely spectacular time last time, and I expect it to be a lot of fun again. We um, we taped, what, four shows when we four, were there? Four yeah. shows. The fourth so, of which is, is up and live now on our Patreon page. So... We're probably going to try to stick to the same amount, same amount of shows. We're going to try to so same, same I mean, format, same time. We're going to be doing four shows there again, and uh, so yeah, if you can uh, you make it out, I would I would recommend it. Like you said, five dollar tickets. Um, you go online uh, to our ticket leap and uh, reserve your spot. You don't have to pay anything up front. So you're just reserving your spot because we do have limited amount of tickets available. So if you want to go limited seating because of the Rona. Yes. Yeah, so if you want to go. We'll post it out on our socials for you to go to our Ticket Leap uh, website, reserve your spot, and do us all a favor. Don't be a dick and reserve a spot and not show up. Don't sure. do that because you might uh, might you know free someone out that actually wants to be there. So but let's not do that. Sign up, come on down, enjoy the day. Cheap tickets, a lot of fun. And you know what? I'll do a special thing. Everyone that shows up gets to chop Shane Jones. Just one. Just one, just one. We'll pick one. One chop, right. yeah. Not one. No, I mean person, one, one chop per person. person. Got it. One, one chop person. per person. You heard it here first. One chop per person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, chop Jason Albert. No, absolutely not. I don't think so. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we do want Howard back as CEO, and we do need to petition, petition the board. You're right. Well, you know, uh, not a CEO, but uh, the board is conducting right now a general manager search. Me, I, I'm staying out of the matchmaking. I'm staying out of the in-ring business, and that means that WPW is going to need a matchmaker, somebody who can put the title matches together and who can decide uh, just how those matches are going to go to bring people in the door. So if you'd like to throw your name in there, I'm sure the board would take that under consideration. Oh, they're well aware of this. You forget I have many contacts I'm, on the I'm board. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. You, I have many contacts on the board, so this search is going to be quick. So anyway. Yeah. Let's see. We have a question here. Where What's is our question? Ricky Cruz? You know what? I am in contact with Ricky all the time, and uh, we, don't, like, we don't have any news just yet, but never say never. Didn't you just say never? I never said never. You you just you just said it again. I never said never. I said what? Say never, never. Anyway, uh, is that like a double negative? So it's a positive. I think so. So I am trying to think of an insult for Tank, and I'm having 
I can't come up with a double negative other oh, than Tank, Tank I just hate him. Wants, Tank wants the job of the matchmaker. The the well, that's a big conflict of interest right there because he's a crooked referee anyway. So yeah, uh, how about a lawful good CEO? I mean, that's me. I was you know I was a good guy, right? Everyone loved me. Playboy Double H claims everybody's running from him. Well, I mean, most people are, so that's okay. Sure. Yeah, you know, uh, we'll get back to kind of some of these other comments, but we do have some other news. Uh, oh, WTW will be taking part in a AIWF. We are an AIWF member company. Uh, that's, that's Allied that's, Independent Wrestling Federation. That logo right, 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 right above your head right, right there. there. Right there. One, it is the largest federation of independent companies in the world, and they will be having a showcase event in Houston, Texas on May 14th and 15th, and we will be sending several representatives that night. Would you like to know who they are? Um, sure. I think you have a suspicion of who a couple of them are. Um, we will be sending the WPW Tag Team Champions, the Violators, along with their yeah. members. Uh-huh. Jason Halbert and Dale Winchester. Yeah, that's you know what? That's worth the price of admission right there to see the greatest tag team in the AIWF, the greatest tag team in AIWF history, and the greatest tag team in WPW history right there. And the that's, greatest not, manager. that's not all that's going though. No, no, absolutely no, not. No, we'll be sending the butcher, Damian Blade. Uh okay. There we go. We'll see if uh, P.T. Beckham decides to follow him down to Houston for a night. You know what? It would not be a terrible idea. However, I almost don't want to see that happen because I would like to see that in one of our rings so where our fans could see that. See, something tells me that there'd be nothing sanctioned there. That There would be unsanctioned parking lot brawl action. Do you there. really think it's going to be sanctioned where, in our ring either? I'm well, pretty... See. I mean, if it were me, if I were still CEO, that nope, nope, sign it away. Nope, not happening. Not our doing. Mm. You're also the CEO that, that green-lighted the Skull Canyon match. Twice. Twice. Yeah. All right. We have <laughs> former U.S. champion El Magnifico, former WPW champion Johnny Rocco. We have the one, the only, Shrapnel going. We have Mr. Guaranteed Gold, Marcellus Knight, and just added... Your favorite, the shooter, Curtis Payne. Just because he can't hack it, and you know, I guess he, since he decided he can't hack it in uh, PYT, he's going to try to make a name somewhere else or somewhere where, you know, they don't know him. So maybe he's got a shot at people liking him. I don't know. Do you I mean, know whatever. Dexter Roswell? Emily, I know Dexter quite well. Great talent. Maybe you see him in WPW one day. So I believe um, I thought there was another name on there too. Wasn't there one that, other name? That's it for now. Okay. Yep. I, I, I'll be riding along to represent WPW. Okay. Yeah. And I think, as much as I hate to say it, I think we're going to take our best. Okay, take that. I use that term. I'm going to use this term very loosely. Our best referee, Sherman Tank, I think is going to go with us too. Because oh uh, yeah, let head referee Sherman Tank. I have yeah. a list here somewhere. Because maybe, maybe he got scratched because he couldn't show up to work today. Possibly. But if we're going to be putting on our own matches, I want, you know, w- our referee w- doing it. Referee, yeah. Yeah. You never you never know who, who's going to slide some money under the table to the referees. And I mean, we, we know Sherman Tank's above that. We do? Yeah, I would think. I mean, maybe? So anyway, um, yeah, I think it'll... Marcellus Knight and Shooter make that card great. Yeah, um, if you say so. The greatest part about the card is going to be the uh, Violators. The Violators being, being on there. See, and I don't think the Violators are going to get to go up against a couple rookies, though. I'm not worried. Do you really think that my Violators are going to lose to anyone from our roster, from anyone else in the world? Absolutely not. I'm not worried at all. <laughs> oh, God. Maybe we can see if Wapo can make the trip. No. No. Absolutely not. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, it's going to be, it'll be a fun time. 
I'll be honest, I've never gone to Houston before, so it's going to be real I, interesting I to go. Um, it's going to be interesting being stuck in a vehicle with a couple other people. Um, yeah. Nothing great on that card because PYT won't be there. Well, unfortunately, Playboy, we reached out to the PYT representatives uh, to attend that that showcase, and, and they never got back to us. I mean, we can always throw someone out, a.k.a. Tank. I mean, that'll lighten up our load by, you know, four we or five get at least pounds. three or four PYT members in there in, in exchange for Tank. Yeah, I would do that. Who wouldn't? Uh, we can probably do without Marcellus Knight, too, and Shooter. We can go oh, without them. Oh, we can make room. It's cool. In. He could cash that case in any time he wanted, even if it's in uh, in Houston. Yeah, but do you really think he's going to want to go for... I mean, who, who, the only titles that are going to be there are the tag team champions. He's going to have to find someone to team with. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's cashed that, that in before, for, or, or his brother cashed it in for the tag team titles once. Idiots. You save that and you go after the world title at the most opportune time. Eh, if you don't have scruples, then I guess that's what you could do. That's how everyone's supposed to do it. Okay. Go back in history and look at other similar situations like that. The ones that have succeeded have always done it at the last minute. The ones that announced it ahead of time, those are the idiots. Yeah, you, you knew this ahead of time, uh, Kyle. Yeah, of course. So anyway, yeah, that'll be fun. March, uh, May 13th and 14th. But, uh, Hopefully, God, I just, I, I, hopefully, 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 hopefully we can have real shows soon because I miss it. Fingers crossed. I will be getting some confirmation tomorrow and hopefully next week I can, I can tell everybody about some shows coming back, especially to the Collinsville VFW. So not in set in stone yet, but I'll, I'll be, I'll keep fingers crossed. I'll be honest. It's real hard to, to. Talk about news and stuff, and we haven't been able to have shows. So, it if is. it sounds like we're stalling and it sounds like we're just doing filler, we are 100%. Well, you know, it's been since October since we've had a real show, and then one TV taping since. And, and, and not, not to not mention, for a lack of desire to, and not to mention, like 75% of our content is ripping on Tank, who's not here. It's true. So, well, that means it, we, and we didn't know until the last case, minute either. In that case, why don't we get to our guest tonight? Uh, okay. Why not? I can't right. think of a, a better way. Yeah, a better way to kill time. <laughs> Our guest tonight is a third generation uh, professional wrestler. Uh, he is the one and the only. Are you ready? Sure. Got something to enter him in with? Uh, I don't uh, know. Are okay. you asking music? No. Yeah. All right. Well, he's the one and only Keith Smith Jr. They're cheering for the mustache. That's all they're cheering for. They all just hey, want you know what? It's a beautiful right? mustache. Now, Keith, I don't know if you know this or not, but your finishing maneuver has officially been uh, named the mustache ride. That, that's what <laughs> it will be referred to from here on out. That's that's great, actually. I'm I'm thrilled that it finally caught on. It only took a year. The mustache yeah. mafia. I'll, I'll tell you, the, the only other mustache I've ever seen that's been that glorious was on Tank's mother. So. That is pretty, that's a pretty impressive mustache. And I'll tell wow. you this much. If you think it looks pretty here on screen, show up at our shows because it is like 10 times more glorious in person. That is true. And I've heard you can get your own mustache at the merch table. Yes, you can get mer uh, mustache t-shirts, um, koozies, stick-on mustaches. Can you say that? Uh, earrings. <laughs> it's a koozie. <laughs> oh, okay. koozie. <clears throat> Not a cooter. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> PG now. Really? <laughs> really? We're still <laughs> going. After Hank, I think that went out the window. We're still too. calling us PG? I'm still going to try to be as friendly, family friendly as possible. Absolutely. So Keith, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, you know, I, I can't imagine that there's too many people out there that aren't familiar with you, but could you give us a little bit of background on, on your family, the, the, being the third generation, who they were, and, and kind of just, just let some people know, know about the, the Smith family? Um, so it all started with my grandfather. Um, he wrestled out of the Kansas City area, uh, and then he refereed um, at wrestling at the chase. Um, and then he also did wrestle uh, in Missouri or in St. Louis um, for South Broadway Athletic Club uh, towards the end of his career a lot more. Uh, but he mainly wrestled out of Kansas the most. 
uh, which then followed uh, my dad in his footsteps. Uh, he wrestled mainly out of the St. Louis area, but he definitely did travel a lot. Um, I have stories from when I was a kid when, I mean, pretty much every Friday I was getting pulled out of school early uh, so we could hit the road and go to wherever my dad was wrestling. Um, and then he would wrestle two shows that weekend and we'd turn around, drive right back to St. Louis um, and wait until the next week to do it all over again. Um, so I've been around wrestling my entire life. This is what I know. Um, I was at my first show when I was 28 days old. Good. So I, I grew up um, knowing wrestling. I started training when I was 15. I uh, had my first match when I was almost 16. Um, I transitioned to the refing phase, uh, refereeing phase for a couple years. <clears throat> While I finished school, I did, did wrestle a couple shows here and there in between. Uh, but I really focused on school. That was a big thing. Um, that I was, it was, if you didn't have good grades, there was no chance you were stepping in the ring, whether it was to train or to referee. Um, and then I went to college. And then when I went to, left for college, I actually, that's when I started wrestling the most. And I was traveling back, um, traveling all over from I was up in Northeast Missouri for college. Um, and then I would travel all over to do shows, whether it was to Kansas City or down to St. Louis um, or other areas. Very cool. Uh, what would you say is like just the one of the most coolest things that you can remember traveling on the wrestling circuit with your dad as a kid? Um, appropriate wise, um, <laughs> I was I was definitely coursed uh, to do a lot of inappropriate things when I was a kid. Um, but I, I mean, I would have to say just the fact of going to shows. When I was like six, seven, eight, I, I really under like understood wrestling at that time. Um, so I was able to not only enjoy the shows, but like there were times I would get to meet bigger name wrestlers um, that would get brought in. Um, one of my favorites when I was a kid was Rob Van Dam. Um, I got to meet Rob multiple times um, with him being brought into uh, multiple different organizations in the St. Louis area. So, I mean, getting to meet some of the people that like I looked up to that, like when I watch TV, that's who I seen on TV. Uh, I got to see them and meet a lot of them multiple times. Uh, so, people like Jerry Lynn. Go let ahead. me ask you a question. Everyone's dying to know this question. How much of a contact high did you get from hanging out with RVD? Uh, so I was only the first time I met him. I want to say I was like 10 or 11. So I, I had no idea what that was. Um, <laughs> But I mean, you when you push it back to like sixteen, seventeen, there there might have been a chance. <laughs> so what was what was your first impression when you got to you're you're, you're seeing some of these guys on TV and then you get to meet them backstage? Did it get to the point where it's like, oh hey, no big deal, or or was it exciting every time? Um, it was it was exciting every time. There was there was a couple names that were brought in uh, that I would see on a regular basis. Um, Jerry Lynn was one of them. Um, I seen Jerry Lynn multiple times. Um, Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Um, I got to meet him multiple times. He actually remembered me, and we went four or five years without seeing each other. Um, and he remembered me um, four years later. He knew exactly who I was. Um, That's impressive for him. It is, and, and and I mean, you get on some of like you build those relationships with some of those people that have a knowledge, a wealth of knowledge in wrestling, and and they were able to go to that next level. <clears throat> and and perform so you're still kind of starstruck um whenever you see them but at the same time you're you're able to build some sort of relationship with them sometimes absolutely i can remember uh the first two people that i had ever watched on tv that i got to meet in person were uh dan severn and, and cowboy bob orton and both of those guys the first time you meet them you're kind of just you're nervous you know these are people that have been all over the world i mean dan severn ufc champion ufc hall of famer uh nwa champion cowboy bob orton wrestlemania one and then the more you get to know them and, and you get to share some of that knowledge with them and you get you get to talk with them and and get to understand some of those things that that they have to say it's just it's one of the coolest things that could happen in this business I I have to agree hands down. Um, I know one of the, the my dad's favorite stories. Um, he was actually called to wrestle on a Monday Night Raw um, in case they were to need somebody that wasn't going to be able to show up. They thought um, so. I actually got to meet the Undertaker. Oh, that um, would have been at, awesome. At that time, I was 
below my dad's waist uh, at height. I was very young. I knew who he was, obviously. Uh, but when I met him in person, I was hiding behind my dad, uh, actually looking out between his legs to see him. Um, that's like one of my dad's favorite stories to tell. That's That was, the I think, the first like big name wrestler that I got to meet that I watched on TV on a regular basis. Wow. That's just really cool. Yeah. So, oh, we have a question from the audience here for you. When growing up around Broadway, who would have been the dream match you wanted to face growing up? Uh, I have two. Uh, actually, I have three, really. Um, two of them I know very well. Um, one is the human wrecking ball, Pete Madden. Um, he wrestled at South Broadway, and he wrestled at mother, uh, many other places. Um, he wrestled at GCW a lot, uh, where my dad left broadway to go to um so pete madden is one of them uh, another, the raging like agent dad, and, oh no, just like your dad uh pete madden another hall of famer yes yes um the second one is the raging cajun uh big bad ben um same boat he he started at south broadway um he's actually the one that left to go start um, another organization which i grew up around a lot of and then the third one uh, would have to be john blackheart um, that would be the one person I remember the most um, from Broadway specifically. Uh, I feel like every time I turned around, he was him and my dad were wrestling. Um, so that would be the one person I feel like would be amazing because he also got to wrestle my grandfather. Wow. Now, a lot of people, if today's fans who haven't been around for a while, maybe not as familiar with Broadway, may not know the name John Blackheart and just the absolute legacy that he's had on the wrestling business. Um, if, if you're not familiar with John Blackheart, you would probably know some of the people who he have trained and had an, a huge influence on, including uh, a wrestler named Delirious. And if you're not sure who Delirious is, he's pretty much the one that runs all of the training for Ring of Honor. So anything that you see in Ring of Honor today has its origins with John Blackheart. So that's a guy that just has an immense amount of influence on the business. Yes. Um, well, he has a huge influence on the business. And if you think about it, I mean, guys like delirious, that was another person I grew up around, um, because he was at GCW a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Evan Bourne, Matt Seidel, uh, mm -hmm. whichever, whatever you want to call him. That's another person, um, that has tremendous talent that I grew up around. And I, I feel like I was just grateful to be surrounded by people, um, that have made it far in, in, in wrestling. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're hoping that we one day see your name with, in those. We'll see you on TV <laughs> soon, and we'll point to your time in a WPW ring as a launching point for some of that. Yeah, I mean, I think whenever I started wrestling for WPW, um, I actually started tagging with my father um, you did. multiple times. So um, that's where it started. Uh, I took a little hiatus. I, I um, kind of regathered myself and and refigured out what direction I, I wanted to go in in wrestling. And now I'm back at WPW. So Before you took your break, if I remember right, was it you or your father that had gotten a beer bottle smashed over the back of their head by oh, PYT? That was him. That, that was me. That was you. That, yeah, that may is. have been part of the cause of the break for a while. A little bit of recuperation from that. Yes. Um, don't worry. PYT uh, still has still has their name on a, on a list that needs to be checked off down the road. Uh, and don't get me wrong. I'm sure I'll cross them again. Well, speaking of crossing PYT, you had a chance to, to on the show that is currently on our, our Patreon site. You had a chance to take on the WPW champion, Reed Rain. I did. Um I guess the best way to put that is uh, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, that's not going to happen. So when uh, we when I see PYT again, well, well everybody will be aware. Definitely going to go after that title again, huh? I think so. Yeah. Why not? I think I, I have. I think that's something that that we'd see again. I, I, don't, uh, I don't see any reason why that wouldn't happen. It, and you know what? You you brought it up earlier. Uh, that's the only reason I'm going to bring it up again. Is and, and Jason, I mean, he he runs his mouth, and he he doesn't think that there's anybody that's going to be able to take that tag team title away from him, uh, him and his boys. But you brought up a name earlier that I am very familiar with. Uh, 
a lot of people know it, uh, Ricky Cruz. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, I mean, if, if it were to ever happen and, and, and Ricky comes to WPW, the heavyweight title might be put on the, put on the back burner. We all know Ricky likes to collect belts. Yeah. And why not go after uh, tag team belts? What makes you think you're in the same league as my violators? I mean, seriously, have you seen them? I have, I have, and none of them have, have accolades like myself and Ricky. Uh, And I don't think that they ever will. Well, I mean, you can think that, and you, you you can be wrong, but I mean, they're the greatest tag team in WPW history. So I don't understand why. First off, I don't even understand where you where you think you you're going to get a tag team title opportunity at the Violators for one, and for two, why you are just so confident that you think that if if we grant you that that opportunity, that you even have a snowball's chance in hell of winning the match. So I mean. If you want to squander all your opportunities and come up just a bit short, like, you know, you have in other matches in WPW, you know, just, just can't quite win the big one. I mean, by all means, you, you can think that you're just not going to, it's just not going to happen. I think the one thing you're forgetting is that I haven't lost in WPW, bud. I mean, at the end of every match, I, the, my name has been announced the winner. But you Whether just I get haven't, cheated or not. I haven't still, been able to just win the big one. I mean, you might win, but last I checked, oh yeah, who's our WPW champion? But who still was announced the winner? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Who's who's still champion? It does. Oh. And ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't had a chance to see that match yet because you're not on our Patreon page, first of all, why aren't you on our Patreon page? Five dollars a month, you get first run of absolutely everything. And and I've got a few announcements as far as some new features is going on there that we'll get to in a little bit. But if you're not on there, a little bit after our Patreon members get to watch the match, those those shows do get moved to our uh, YouTube channel, WPW Video on YouTube. So once that ma- once that match gets posted onto YouTube, if you haven't seen it on Patreon, get on there, watch the show, watch what happened, and you'll see exactly what we're talking about when Keith Smith Jr. got his chance at the WPW title. We have some other questions here from uh, the audience. William Adams asks, what did it feel like when your dad got inducted into the St. Louis Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2019? Um, so actually, it was it was amazing. It was super special. Um, I actually got to be the one that um, gave his introduction speech. Uh, so it, it it hit really close to home. I like I said, I have stories um, that I could tell for hours just from what I grew up around and the the kind of guy my dad was in the wrestling industry. Um, there's people to this day that that talk high praise of my father. Um, and really the goal, and, and, and my grandfather as well. Uh, so, I mean, by the end of my career, the goal is to um, be looked at in the same manner uh, that my dad and my grandfather both are. Oh, we have a really important question here for you. Yes, this is the, probably the most important question of the night right here. What do you do to make your mustache look so great? <laughs> um, so actually, shout out to Alex. Um, he's one of the original uh, Mustache Mafia members. Um, you can catch them at every South Broadway show. They typically have like three or four tables um, or more. Um, but really, nothing. Like this mustache that you see right now, there's nothing in it. There's zero product. There's zero wax. Nothing. I, I shampoo and condition my mustache on a daily basis. Um, and then typically for shows, I will put wax in it, uh, make it a little bit curlier, make sure that it doesn't fall. Um, but, I mean, this is, this is a day-to-day mustache that you're seeing right here with nothing in it. Monty Chef says, damn right. Shaft, I got your message the other day. I will be giving you a call back. Sorry, I haven't had a chance to do so. See, I, I get important calls as the CEO, Jason. I can get Jason important that. calls Jason, all the time, too. That was like. Yeah, I got get important phone calls all the time still. You think I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot going on. I have plenty to, to the office because you don't have the job anymore. No, I don't report anything to you, buddy. Anyway, let's get back to our guest. Keith. If you could pick one person right now, you know, I know you mentioned uh, possibly uh, wanting to do a tag team with Ricky Cruz, but until that could possibly happen, if you could pick one person to have a match with in WPW right now, who would it be? 
Oh, um, it's kind of tough. Um, I would say the butcher. Uh, however, me and the butcher have have had beef elsewhere. <clears throat> uh, pun intended. But I would have to say the one person that really stands out the most to me is Playboy. Double H. Um, that's the one person I've never had the opportunity to be one on one in the ring with. Oh, I'd love to watch him. What my what that. I can't talk tonight. I would love to watch him mop up the floor with you and that mustache. That would be great. See, but here's because the difference you know, is that I don't need I don't need groupies out at the ring with me or around the ring. Um, I still win regardless. Because you don't so have friends. I think one I think one match with strictly myself and PYT would probably tear the house down. I think yeah. that he is very talented, uh, but I think he runs his mouth too much. Well, the difference is you can run your mouth and you can back it up, which is exactly what Playboy and PYT does. So, I mean, I would love to see that match. I would love to watch him, you know, possibly break another beer bottle or two or three over your head again. I mean, that was great when it happened, and I would love to see it again. So, you can't argue with that one. I mean, if you're ready to start losing, by all means, let's let's see it. I mean, hey, really, really, it's all in all in Shane's hands. Um, I could talk about. I, I'll wrestle I, anybody. I, I handle the business aspect of it. That's that's why we're on the search for a GM to to make those matches. What what I would worry about in that matchup though is it not Keith Smith Jr. versus Playboy Double H, but the gang of people that surround the ring for Playboy the groupies as the match goes on. They're not groupies for one. I'm sorry, uh, ring rats. Um, same they're not, difference. They're they're not ring rats. Pyt is is a family. So. Just because I know you don't have any friends, so you don't really know what that's like. It's okay. And no one really has your back. But in PYT, that's how it works. They have each other's backs. So I, I'm, I'm sorry that you can't wrap your head around that. I guess I, I, guess I, I can't wrap my head around the fact that you call them family, yet they'll turn on one another quicker than, than they can, especially whenever there's a belt or anything involved. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about there. I mean, they they booted Curtis Payne out because he wasn't getting the job done. He cost them their tag team titles, and he's been consistently the the weak link of PYT. So, I mean, absolutely weak member, kick him out. He goes. I mean, there's always one solution to to having people that are outside the ring. And what I mean, what, what pray tell would that be? I think there there'd be two great two great ways to solve that. A a cage keeps them out, or B I think personally a leather strap would be a little bit better. That way Playboy can't run. See, I was thinking of a third option. Just bring everybody out and have a lumberjack match. That sounds even better to me. I mean, I don't think that's a great idea for you, but I mean, by all means, why not? How would that not be beneficial for me? Because you think you think just because I just came back to WPW means I don't have friends? No, you're highly mistaken. But the thing is, PYT isn't what they always what they seem. You may think you you see what they want you to see on the surface, but there's all kinds of stuff going in the background that you don't know about. Translation so you to pay off the refs. No, that's not even where I'm going with this. You <laughs> might think someone's got your back, and then when the time strikes, there they are. They're PYT. You don't know. Oh. Oh, you know there's that could possibly happen one day. There's there's another name. Very talented young individual making a name for himself in the area. That is very true. Um, I I know Chris very well. Um, him and Ricky, we see each other very often. So that that's a huge possibility. I like that idea. You never know. And if not going after PYT, maybe going after those tag titles. <laughs> uh, if we're living in fantasy world okay yeah sure why not but we're living in the real world so i mean whatever you, you, you have slightly less dangerous groupies when going after the violators are you not remembering who's at ringside with the violators you and I'm not necessarily the one you have to worry about. Well, you do have to worry about that mountain of a man, Dale Winchester, with the uh, kendo stick that he likes to smack somebody in the head with. The WPW head of security, Dale Winchester. 
I don't think that there's many people that are actually scared of you. That's yeah. that's the sad part. You know, and that's fine. Physically, I'm not there to intimidate anyone. Intellectually, on the other hand, ain't no no one can go toe to toe with me. I'd love to have a battle of wits, but so far all my opponents have been unarmed. So if I mean, it's you okay. Ever need to know how smart Halbert is? Just ask him. He'd be glad to tell you. Oh, I'm sure. I am the smartest individual on the show, and I'm one. I'm probably the smartest individual in WPW. So, I mean, it's okay. That's why I've, I'm the greatest CEO in history, and I'm the greatest manager in WPW history. It's okay. It is okay. All right. Well, Keith, any parting words for those watching from WPW? Uh, you know what? I Really, really, all that I can say is wrestling – that we know is right back around the corner. Um, yes. Everybody went through a huge shock this last, this last year. Um, so just stick with it. I promise that there are going to be shows that are going to be coming back on the regular, whether it's WPW or, or, or other companies wrestling is coming back. Um, hang on just a little bit longer. That's, that's all we're asking. Everybody I know that is a wrestler is just itching to get back in the ring, um, especially in the St. Louis area. So I'm looking forward to seeing all the fans back out there, even the ones that hate me and I don't know how they do, um, especially with this mustache. Um, but I mean, th there's there's a handful out there that don't like me. And, and even those people, that they, they pay a ticket, they come in and, and they have a time in their life. So just hang on. It's it's right around the corner, I promise. Hopefully you're coming real soon. Yeah. Jason the Junior, thank you very much for being our guest tonight. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. I wish I'd see you next time. Awesome. See you, guys. See you. Can All you right. Be nice to a guest just once. You know, I it was much nicer to him than I've been to most of our other guests. Just saying. Very nice. No one mentions me. Must be some smart and safe individuals. Rough cut Rick Ruby, our new uh, United States champion. Yeah. And by the Stick way, Ruby. Challengers. Ruby, call me. Want to talk? Want to talk a couple things with you? Um, anyway. Uh, so. Michael Lilly would like to see the freak show beat the Violators. Well, I don't know where the hell Bioshock's been because he's been MIA. And uh, I don't think anyone's heard of him, heard from him in Gideon a year. Corbin might try to. Go for the tag titles himself with, it, but that would be but like that would be a handicap match too. Yeah. So I mean, I I, I mean if 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 Bioshock ever shows back up, maybe we'll talk. But until then, it's just gonna be Gideon Morbid and his four thousand personalities against the Violators. So okay, I can't see and, how that would go wrong. Gideon Morbid, he's got his hands full right now. From my understanding. The match is just about made. Jose El Magnifico wants to get his hands on Gideon Morbid for costing him that U.S. title. Yeah, I can't say I blame him, but I, there's, I think there's more to that than we know that's really going on there. And uh, I, I don't want to say too much because there's some new features coming to our Patreon page that, that you want to talk about. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail with that here. But there is somewhere where you will go into detail, isn't oh, there? Absolutely. That on our Patreon page, we're getting ready to launch. Do you have a name for it, or are we going with the hotline? Uh, it, it's the uh, the Halbert Hotline. The Halbert Hotline, exclusive to our patrons on our Patreon page. You'll get the latest information from Jason Halbert himself. He still has some connections. He still has some ears to the ground, and he's willing to share that information with you. Yes. Um, so it's going to be a lot like um, a le a less scammy than than the Mean Jeans uh, WCW hotline. I'm not going to no charge scheme. you. A, huh? No scheme gene. No scheme gene here. Um, so it, it's not going to be a pay per minute thing. And there's it's, it's going to be an audio only type of thing. Um, but I'm thinking I'm not really going to. I'll be honest. There's it's there's not a whole lot going on right now. So there's there's not a ton that I can report right now. We'll have but, some occasional reports right now. And then once, once shows start happening and, and business picks up, 
Yes. A little bit so, more clarity. Absolutely. Um, the first one, the first uh, edition segment of, of the Halber Hotline is going to drop, I would say, probably within the next couple of days. Um, so Fantastic. stay tuned to that. We will we'll announce it. Uh, one is on our Patreon page. So join that. And that's going to be exclusive to our Patreon page. So we're not going to put it out on socials. We're not going to put it out on, you know, anything else. It's going to be exclusively, exclusively on our Patreon page. So if you want to check it out, you're five bucks a month. Um, there you go. That, that right there, we should up it to $20 a month because what I'm going to have is gold. Oh, I got something else for you. Oh, what's that? Have you ever seen the uh, website Cameo? where you uh, can I, hire people to privately do private messages for you, shout outs, happy birthday wishes, things of the sort. Yeah. Okay. I have seen that. Yep. For a limited time, uh-huh. all Patreon members can send us a request for any WPW personality to send them a personal shout out. Hey, there you via, go. Via cameo style. You know, and that's a killer deal because I'll tell you right now, I was playing around on that website today because Facebook tracks everything that's going on and radio show I was listening to was talking about cameo one day and sure enough, now it's on my, my feeds for Facebook. You know, Rick Flair charges $500 for a cameo. Absolutely. Bret Hart is like one fifty. So here you go for five bucks a month. You can get one from any of our WPW superstars. You could get um, if Rob you've got Rick Ruby, uh-huh. you could get one of Gideon Morbid's personalities. We have to limit that down. Yikes, I don't know how, how I don't know which one you're gonna get either. You I don't think you can request from the mustache ride himself, Keith Smith Jr. Absolutely. Do you got a special someone that you don't like that much and you want to give him a birthday shout out from WAPO? I'm sure we can accommodate you with that one. We could see if the violators could string three words together to give a greeting out. Um that's not included with the Patreon five dollars a month. We're gonna charge twenty five for that. <laughs> They're the greatest tag team champs in WPW history. You might even be able to get a greeting from uh, Jason Halbert himself. Uh, that'll cost you extra, but we'll talk. If, you, if you're interested in getting a cameo for me, we'll talk. Let me know. If you have a business that you'd like to advertise with us, we also have an advertise, a, a sponsorship tier on our Patreon page, and that's when we go to work for you. All of our shows, the podcast, all of our websites, our entire reach on social media, we go to work for you to advertise for you as one, as a member of our sponsorship tier. So that's available as, as well. Yeah. Um, and I'll be honest, uh, we're starting in post-production. I think you're, you're starting to try to put some ads and stuff in, in the, the videos are, of even, our, even in uprising, we have spots allotted for uh, commercials to run. So um, th- that's going to be there. Um, Personally, I'm going to try to make a conscious effort every now and then, maybe to, to when we're doing it, calling the match. I mean, not a blatant plug. I mean, well, not I like, not like, oh, hey, a punch there. Oh, hey, if he broke a nail, he can, hook, we can hook him up with our color street person to fix his nail. Nothing like that. But we're, we're going to try to drop, you know, our sponsors more um, during our shows in the if booth as well. A sponsor, we have all kinds of options. We have main event sponsors. We have match sponsors. We have we have uh, a video board that will be a- advertising for our sponsors at, at live events. We have Uprising. We have the podcast. We have a social media page with a wide reach to it. And we want to go to work for our sponsors. I'm pretty sure certain if you want your name tat- uh, stitched on Wapo's tights, on the ass of Wapo's tights, we could probably accommodate that for you. I think there's room. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to be on uh, the back of, you know, someone, maybe we can work that out. If you want to be on maybe Keith, Keith Smith Jr.'s ass, we can maybe put you on. <laughs> I, can't, I can't complete that sentence. Nope. Nope. Can't do it. Nope. Uh, hey, uh, Joe in the chat wants to know, um, digging things up um, from back in the day, can we get a Bosnian idol on Cameo? Can we get that? That's possible. Um Speaking of things from back in the day, something else that's on our Patreon page oh. is the FTW catalog. Slowly but surely, we are getting more things digitized from that era, and they are being uploaded exclusively to Patreon. You're going to see some early matches from people like Xavier Frost, Curtis Payne, uh, Ivan. I, I hear there's Skinny Uriah on there. There is a skinny Uriah on there. Uh, you have some appearances from people like Christian Hayes, who's now retired. You won't see that anywhere else. Uh, you'll see uh, Xavier Frost's brother, Xander Frost. 
you'll see early Gideon Morbid. How many personalities did they have then? My, it's, maybe a couple. I think you're starting to see a couple of them come out at that point. Okay. Yeah. Um, you you could see even some early matches from people who went on to make a name for themselves in other places other than FTW and WPW. A lot of people came through the doors of FTW. There's some Bob Orton matches. Ooh. There's some uh, Kevin Thorne matches. Oh, so a lot of people came through those doors, and we're getting all of those digitized. And the only place you're going to see them is on our Patreon page. Um. Correct me if I'm wrong. I might be wrong on the time frame, but wasn't uh, Fat Chip on those two with hair? Chipster with a lot more hair and a lot more Chipster was on there as well. Yes. Um, the first time I wa- went back and watched some of those, um, first off, I mind you, these are what, 15, 10, 15, maybe right. even older than that. Two, so 2005 to 2010, 11, and that so, range there. First off, we're talking 10 years ago. Pretty much everyone looks a lot different than they did then. Some Absolutely. of the, some of these guys had hair back then. Frost. Um, and some of them... No. Were, no, he didn't have hair back then either? No, he didn't have hair back then either. Oh, well, hell. I think that um, was more my choice back then. Blade? Did Blade have hair then? Yes. Okay. Well, okay. So there you go. So... Pointing, point, there you go. So people like Blade had hair. Um, they they were, you know, in Chip's case, there was a lot more Chipster to him. Um... So yeah, go back if for any, if for nothing else, go back and watch them just so you can see what did this guy look like 15 years ago. I mean, it, it is it is. I'm not gonna lie, it's some good stuff. I've been able to watch some of the old stuff, and uh, I mean, it's just I'm like, it's funny, not in a haha comical way, but it's just funny to see these guys 15 years ago oh. that I've never seen them like that before because I just know now. I mean, it's just it's funny. I like it. It's crazy. I mean, hell, you go back and look at your. High school for those of you that are a little bit older, like us, go back and look at your high school yearbooks. You'll laugh too. Absolutely. So, oh, hey, that's a good question. Is the blood, sweat, and tears match on there yet? Uh, it is not on there yet. Um, some of the tapes still have to be digitized, which is going to be a little bit of a process. Uh, we, a lot of the the DVDs that we had were able to transfer over a little bit more quickly. Were some of the earlier years. Um, so we are working on digitizing a lot of those tapes. And as, as that process happens, they'll be uploaded to the Patreon page. So, um, yeah, I'm telling you, if you can, if you've got the five bucks a month to spare, I mean, uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of FTW wrestling will be on there. So, I mean, even if you want to sit down and, and, and watch a couple matches a day, I mean, you're going to be on there for quite a while. So by all means, I, I've seen, I haven't seen the full scope of the library, but I know there's a lot out there. So, um, Shane, you got anything else? Or is it about that time? Well, it's about that time to talk about our sponsors. Absolutely. So, our sponsors, as soon as he puts the graphic up for me. There There we go. So, first off, uh, you made that really small tonight. First off, we've got the Duke and Duchess of Bling. That's right, $5 paparazzi jewelry. Guys, if you screwed up Valentine's Day and you're still in the doghouse, buy her some jewelry, because what woman doesn't like jewelry? Everything there is five bucks. They got earrings. They've got necklaces. They got bracelets. They got rings. If you're a cheapskate one proposed to your wife or to your girlfriend, then in, you don't want to spend a whole lot. Hit them up, because why not? Um, also, um, if you want some good pictures of her of the $5 ring you gave her, but her nails are nasty, hit up Cindy's Glamorous Nails. Color Street, they're nail polish strips. Super easy to apply. Um, my wife does it in about five minutes. And the good thing is I don't have to smell nasty nail polish or nail polish remover. It just They just come right off. Um, and then also, uh, to cover up, if, if you ch- choose not to go that route and you want to go the whole traditional way of nail polish and you want to cover up that smell, hit up Sarah Lopez and her Scentsy Sales. They're the wax warmers, uh, the, the wax cubes, the stuff that smells really good. Um, make your house smell like a bakery. Um, and if you know what, if you're not in the girly stuff, they've got guy stuff. They have St. Louis Blues wax warmers. They got Star Wars wax warmers. I want to say they had a Death Star wax warmer. It was really, really, really cool. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to get my hands on one. So I was kind of bummed about that. But if you're interested in, in picking up anything from any of our sponsors, hit us up. We will put you in touch with them. Or if you have exceptional eyesight and can see the paparazzi website there, um, that I can't really make out, but you know, if you can see that, hit them up directly. But if you can't, hit us up, we'll put you in touch with them. So, 
Shane, you got anything else? No? Good. So That's for Shane tonight. Jones, I am the voice of WVW, Jason Albert, signing off saying we will see you again next week. Hopefully. Toodles. <laughs>